Hi friends, this is Penny from Penny's Porch. In today's Creative Arts DIY, we're going to be making the Rooster Laurel Wall Art. So the supplies that you're going to need for this project are a piece of plywood. This is sand, S-A-N-D-E, sand plywood. And it's a half inch and it's cut eight inches by ten inches. You'll also need the Iron Orchid Designs Kind Disregard stamp set, Iron Orchid Designs Air Dry Clay, the Fleur de Lis mold, and the Iron Orchid Designs Laurel mold. Now, if you don't have the Iron Orchid Designs Laurel Mold. You have a couple options that you can use in, their, in its place. One is the Iron Orchid Designs Trimmings One Mold. Um, this one right here in particular is a good one for this project. And then there's also the Iron Orchid Designs Trimmings Two Mold. And it has a couple different options in it that, are, that might work. And then there's also the Iron Orchid Designs Swags Mold, and it has this real nice swag right here, and then it has the roses right here, so um, those, those would work as well. Then you're also going to want some ivory colored um, chalk style paint and brown colored chalk style paint. Any brand doesn't matter. Um, you'll want some water to thin your paint down with a little bit and you'll need some water to rinse out your brushes. Um, you'll want a couple paint brushes that are kind of soft and a rolling pin and a scraper tool. And then you'll also need some cornstarch and a damp towel. Okay, I think that's all the supplies that we need to get this. Oh, and I did want to mention too that you also need some uh, water-based varnish. And I think that's it. I think that's all the supplies we need to get this this project done. I forgot to mention that we also need some glue. Um, for today's project I'm going to be using Art Glitter Glue. Um, it's from artglitter.com. So that's the glue I'm going to be using for today's project. But you can also use the Tight Bond quick and thick multi-surface glue and you can use the Elmer's glue all multi-purpose glue so those are some options that you have for the glues okay we're going to get started so the first thing we want to do and um, be sure to keep um, a ziplock type baggie handy so you can put your clay zip it up in a bag because you want to keep you want to keep it sealed the, all the time so I've just got a big chunk of the clay and I'm just gonna pat it down a little bit and I'm gonna use my rolling pin and start rolling it out and if you find that while you're doing this part of the project, if your clay starts to stick, um, just sprinkle a little tiny bit of cornstarch on it. And all we're doing now is just rolling the clay out on top of our board, and we're creating a base for our kind disregards to be stamped on. Now I'm going to pinch some of this off on the side because I don't want it to go over the sides. I want it to go up to the sides but not over. just keep rolling it out 
to where you have, you don't want to cover the whole board, but you want to cover most of it. And it's, it's rolled out fairly thin. All right, now I have this little bit of clay I'm just going to drop down in my bag. All right, that feels pretty good to me. I'm going to hold it up here so you can see. It's, it's kind of thin, but it's not... I mean, there's still a little bit there to it. All right, I think that looks good. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll move that out of the way and we'll put some glue on our board. Let's see if I can, yeah. I'm gonna use a brush and just kind of smooth it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be smooth, but I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. Add a little bit more glue. Clay right back over it and don't worry about like there's there's some extra glue up there it's not gonna hurt anything now I'm pressing it down and I'm getting some air bubbles but that's okay we'll just Our rolling pin and get our clay stuck to our board. Now I've got a little knife here. I'm going to slit where I'm seeing those air bubbles. Just poke a little hole. If you have a toothpick or just anything to poke a little hole where you're seeing these air bubbles. Okay. And then just take your finger and smooth it out. going to do it. Alright, the next thing that we're going to do is use our Kind Disregard stamp set. And when you get your Kind Disregard stamp set, um, look on the back, if you're new to stamping with Iron Orchid Designs, look on the back of your stamp set and go through these tips for using your stamp set. And it talks about conditioning your stamp the first time you use it. Now the way the stamp comes is it's on a it's on a backer sheet and then it has a cover sheet. So I'm pulling the cover sheet off, but I'm leaving it on its backer sheet. And then I'm just gonna lay my stamp down about where I, I want it. And there's no um, there's really no right or wrong way with this. And then you just take your fingers and you start pressing it down. And the only thing you, that you really have to watch about when you're doing this step right here is you don't wanna shift it back and forth or move it up and down. So 
usually with the clay, um, that's not really a problem, but all I do is just take my fingers and I just gently press and I'm just getting the impression of the stamp set in the clay right now. And leaving your stamp set on the board, just lift up one side and that way you can get an idea if you missed an area, like I had a, a gap there that I missed. Yeah, see, that looks better to me. Now I'm gonna lift up this other side, see if I missed anything over there, and then lift up the bottom. Looks good, and I'll lift up the top, yep. Okay, I think that's good. Okay. Now we have our impression of the Condis Regard stamp set in the clay. And as far as cleaning your stamp set, just use a wipe, like a baby wipe. Or, um, I also have wipes that are um, their makeup remover wipes that I get from Walmart. And they're only like 97 cents, so I use those a lot too. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm taking my thumb and I'm just pressing down the edges of the clay. I want to really get the edges of the clay really thin. Now we're ready to add our castings to our wood that we did the kind disregards impression on and what I've done is I used I keep my cornstarch in this container right here and then I just keep a brush and I've just used a brush and add a little bit of cornstarch to the cavities of the molds that we're going to be using now we'll take out a piece of our clay and Kind of roll it into like a sausage. I'm sorry, I'm shaking the camera a little bit. All right, and then just place it in the cavity and press down. After you do this a few times, you kind of get an idea of about how much clay you need. All right, and I'm gonna use my scraper tool, and I'm going at, I would say, probably about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just scraping off the top part of the clay. Now, with this extra clay I have in my hand, I'm just going to go in there and pick up some of the extra clay that's around the sides. Now, with the Iron Orchid Designs, well, with the, the new Iron Orchid Designs molds, you have a micro rim. And that is exclusive to the new Iron Orchid Designs molds. And so if you look 
right and through here you can see like this little bit of a lip there and I like to take my fingers and just smooth out the clay and go all around that micro rim and it helps you get a clean casting every time just like so flip it over and let gravity release the casting from your mold. Okay, so now we have that one done. And that's what it looks like. Now we'll do the other side. Now we're going to do the castings from the Flor de Lis mold. And we're going to be using the heart and the rooster. And you just do those the same way. So now we're ready to start gluing our castings onto our board. And what we'll do is we'll place our rooster up toward the top and we'll place each of our laurels on each side of the rooster or chicken. I think it's a rooster though. <laughs> and um, it's what I call it. That's why I call it Rooster Laurel. Okay, and so I'm just kind of getting an uh, idea of about where I want everything. So I've got probably at least a half an inch up there at the top, and I want to come down here at the bottom with the heart and make sure that I have um, approximately the same and um, just kind of get an idea of where I want my castings. And over here on the sides, I would I would say I probably have a, I would say approximately three quarters of an inch on each side. And I think that looks good. Okay, so we're ready to start gluing down. So the first thing I'll do is go ahead and glue down my heart down here on the bottom. And I'm just turning it over and putting some glue on the back of it. flip it over and then gently press down you don't want to press so firmly that you distort the casting but at the same time you want to press enough to get the glue to adhere okay now we'll take our laurel and we'll basically do the same thing. We'll just put some glue on it. And again, um, I'm probably about I'm probably about three, well, I, I would say about three quarters of an inch, maybe half inch to three quarters of an inch from the side over here. And I think that looks good right there. So I'm just going to do the same thing. And you'll start to see that you'll have a little bit of the glue that'll come out from the sides, and that's okay. Um, it dries clear and it's paintable. You don't want a huge amount of glue coming out, but you want to make sure that your castings are secure. Okay, now we'll do this side.
uh, hold it up there a second so I can see it a little bit better I think I think that looks pretty good okay now we'll just do the same thing on this side Okay, now we just need to glue down our rooster. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to let this dry for at least 15 to 20 minutes. And the reason for that is we want our castings to develop what we call a surface crust, meaning the outer layer of the castings is going to start drying. Of course, the in, inside parts of the casting are still going to be wet and, and they'll have to have longer drying time but for now um, so that we can start painting we want to let our castings develop a surface crust so we're going to let this set for like 15 to 20 minutes and then we'll come back and start painting now we're ready to start painting and what i've done is I added some water to my ivory paint and then I added some water to the brown paint and you want probably it's like a creamy consistency and you want probably one part water to three parts paint but you can tell it's just um, it's not watery but it's a creamy thin thinner consistency so we'll start with our ivory and we'll just go all over the whole thing randomly. And you want to get down in the in the grooves and the cracks and crevices, but you don't want to have globs of paint, um, particularly around your laurels, um, because we want to be able to see the details of our castings. So I'm using a soft brush and I'm just going around and making sure I have a good coat of paint over the whole entire surface. And I'm taking extra care to make sure that I get any globs of paint out of the detailed part of the castings. One thing to note is that the glue will hold your castings, but by painting a, painting your castings like we are right now, that is an extra measure of making sure that our castings stay attached to our board securely.
Okay, then you also want to make sure that you paint your edges. And if you're like me, you're going to paint your hands too. <laughs> okay, now our next step is to allow this paint to dry. And with any chalk style paint, the drying time is usually pretty quick. So I would say probably, oh, I don't know, about 15 minutes or something like that. Should be plenty of time. You can use a blow dryer on low, um, but you have to be careful when you're using a blow dryer whenever you're doing castings because um, any air dry clay naturally shrinks and cracks as the moisture from the air dry clay dissipates. So you want to be careful about using a blow dryer because when you try to speed dry air dry clay you um, may get more cracks and shrinkage and that kind of thing. But with this particular design, we do welcome the cracks because it just lends to the authenticity of this design. But we'll give this about another 15, 20 minutes and then we'll come back and do the next step. Now we're ready to go to the next step. And our next step is to put some water-based varnish over our whole entire design. And I just have a regular soft brush and I'm not trying to go any particular way. I like the um, what I call the crosshatch motion. Whenever I'm painting designs like this or adding the varnish to them, um, I just go like in a crosshatch pattern and I don't worry about making sure that it's vertical or horizontal or I don't worry about brush marks or anything like that because this is an old world style type design and so you don't have to worry so much about it. Okay, now I have extra varnish that I need to make sure that I get out of the grooves just like when we did our ivory paint. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to come in and we're just going to make sure that we don't have globs of the water-based varnish. Now this varnish won't take very long to dry and what I'm going to do to speed up the drying process is I'm going to use a blow dryer on low. And like I said earlier, whenever I'm doing these kind of designs, I'm usually um, having workshops. And um, so we tend to speed up the process by using blow dryers. And like I said earlier, you'll have some cracks and some shrinkage that'll come from basically rushing it, um, kind of rushing the process. But I don't mind that because I think it just lends to the look that we 
want with this particular type of design. That feels pretty good to me. So our next step is to use our brown paint and this is where we're going to need our damp towel too. And I'm using one of the shop cloths, one of the damp shop cloths, but you can use a uh, paper towel or I prefer the shop, shop cloths because they're soft and they don't leave lint and that kind of thing. Okay, so for this part, I'm just going to add our brown paint right over top of what we did, just like this. And we're going to make sure that we get the brown paint down in the cracks and crevices. And you can go around the edges some if you want or, or leave them just the ivory color. I like to add a little bit of brown to my edges. All right, now we'll take our damp shop cloth and we'll just start wiping it away. I might need that to be a little bit more damp. Spray a little water on there. Now, if when you're doing this step right here if you feel like your castings are becoming distorted or if you feel like um, I'm going to grab a wipe real quick because I think my shop I think my shop towel got too dry so I'm just going to use one of these makeup remover wipes but if you feel like when you're doing this step right here if you feel like your castings are becoming distorted if you feel like your clay is too soft and you feel like your castings are becoming distorted when you're doing this step right here then um, obviously you want to go ahead and take off the surface layer of the brown paint um, that you've already put on at this point but you can just stop right there and wait until your castings are more dry because you don't want to distort the castings so what we're doing basically is we're allowing the brown paint to get down into the grooves into the cracks and crevices but we're wiping it off of the top part and that gives us that look that we're going for and it it also it's preference too because you may want to have a little bit darker you know design basically What I like to do is around my like rooster's legs and just you know d different spots I like to leave a little extra brown um, 
because I feel like it's kind of um, going to like underneath his body and you know different places like that there's going to be a shadow cast so I feel like those areas need to be darker anyway now I would wait until the next day to just make sure that your design is the desired colors that you want because like I said, you can the next day you can come in and, and take off a little bit more of the brown if you need to. And also, I forgot to mention that you actually probably should put a hanger on the back prior to what we're doing right now because you don't want to um, take a chance on smashing your castings but really once they're dry they dry really firm so like I didn't put a hanger on the back of mine yet um, so it's okay you don't have to wait but uh, I mean you don't have to do it at first but I do recommend that it. it's easier so let it dry real good let it set overnight and let it dry real good and then you can come back with your shop towel, soft cloth, and wipe off some more of the brown if you want to. And once you get it to the to the point where you're satisfied with the whole design, then you'll add another coat of the sealer. And like I said, you'll need to paint the back and add a hanger to it if you want to again that's personal preference I took off too much of the paint there really and truly if you just do a little bit of the brown paint at a time and keep wiping it off um, you're really better off to do it that way okay I hope you all have enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope that you'll visit me on Facebook. Just type in at Penny's Porch on Facebook. And I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and let your friends know about it. I'd appreciate that. And there we go.